Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at the new INIC fleet, designed completely by Shook. He has poured some serious time and effort into building these for an upcoming project. Now, the INIC have been with us for quite some time, all the way from Joint Survival, through the Colony War series, and they're always causing a bit of trouble. So Shook, tell us the difficulties of building a big fleet like this from the ground up? Uh, the difficulties for building a large fleet like this was basically getting a ship for everything that uh, it would be needed to be used for. Mm -hmm. So logistics, fighting, things in between. As well as getting them to look similar enough that uh, you know that when you see it, just its general shape and color and things along those lines, that it is within the same fleet. Yep, so that's it. We've got the lovely blue, white, and gray INIC color scheme. We've also got some INIC logos, I believe, on some of the ship, and we've got some little bits of writing. So let's have a look at their mm -hmm. smaller ships to start with. Now, we've got three. We've got a fighter, a multi-role, and a troop transport. Let's start by having a look at the fighter. Can you go over some of the basic features that we've got here as you pilot it about? Okay. So the basic features of this... Uh, Starling. Of the Starling. Yeah, is good fuel time, decent firepower, uh, very cheap and small, easy to use, easy to repair, easy to replace, things along those lines. Mm -hmm. And it's mainly hydrogen and ion, so it can go down to planets, it can chase people, and it's not really limited with the amount of hydrogen tanks. You say it's got six? This one has four. Oh, this one's got four. So four hydrogen tanks should allow it to get quite far away from the carrier and get back so it can engage in a fight without worrying about the fuel running out, especially in space, but also down on the planets. Did you want to give it a little bit of a flyabout, show its maneuverability? There we go, very nice indeed. Yeah, then big engines are providing with some a good bit of thrust, aren't they? Yeah. Right, shall we move on to the next one? Have a look at the next little ship we've got. So this one's a little bit bigger, and go on, what were you, you were saying about its multi-purpose capacity? Uh, yes, this is the Sparrow, and it is more of a multi-purpose uh, fighting ship. So it's still a fighter, but this one has rockets, same amount of gats. Uh, boom for picking up people if you've ever needed to. Mm -hmm. uh, think of it kind of like a... Something along the lines of probably a hind-ish. Okay, yeah, so you've got the troop transport capability, you've got the flying about. So as I'm talking about these, feel free to jump in and just give them a little bit of a spin for everyone so we can have a look at them. So, we, of course, we have got the rockets with this, and all these ships are using a mixture of all the thrusters, so they're kind of getting the best of both worlds, and they do have redundancies. If hydrogen does fail, then they can, of course, rely on their iron thrusters and whatnot. But very nice. And you give it a little bit of a turn. Let's see its gyroscopic movement. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's going to be hard to fight with, hard to get off your tail. Should we move on to the next one? Yes. So with this one, we have the Condor, the troop transporting one. Would you like to go over some of these features, maybe lower its ramp? Oh, it's also got turrets. Yes. The the Condor actually is a troop transport slash good-sized gunship. Mm -hmm. You can literally cut this thing clean in half, and it will continue to go and fight. Uh, it's got a ramp for people to get in and out, as well as clothes for additional protection for the people in the back. All right, raise yeah. it up and down. Let's have a quick look at that ramp. Yeah. So it's a split ramp, this one. Yes. Very nice. Very cool indeed. Keep going. And it's got decent room for people as well as additional cargo if you needed it. Wow, there's a lot of space in here. You could literally stick cargo containers down the middle and then probably pipe them up if you needed it for a mission like that. Yeah, it's got plenty of room for large cargo containers. Very nice indeed. Do you want to take this one off and see what sort of maneuverability? So what, how many turrets have we got on this one? We've got two on each wing pod. Yes, there's two for each, so that's eight. Eight turrets. And we we still have a bit of firepower around the front. Yeah, it's got 12, yeah, 12 Gatling guns on the front. Okay, let's have, this let's one have a look. doesn't have any rockets, though. What about its gyroscopic sort of movement? What we got there? Okay, so you all of these ships seem really maneuverable, even mm. though they're all getting larger in size. Talking about getting larger in size, let's have a look at, would you consider it a frigate? I think so. I don't know ship classifications very well, so... Neither do I, neither do I, to be honest, because <laughs> some classifications that some people say you, you don't know and you don't know on scale. So we've got the Goblin. 
to start us off. So talk us briefly about the purpose and the role of this ship, Shot. The Goblin was meant to be a smaller, cheaper battleship, kind of like your entry-level battleship mm -hmm. for INIC. So they could get in it, get produce them pretty quickly, go out and do some kind of uh, combat with them against relatively normal people who have relatively simple ships. Okay, so we've got the big battery rockets at the front quite nice and then we've got the turrets around the side nice iron ic logo and i like how you've like recessed a lot of their weaponry to add some protection we've got another hydrogen iron type combination is there any atmospheric on this or is this strictly for space this is strictly for space okay okay and how would we gain access either through the cargo bay at the bottom uh through the cargo bay or there's doors for entering on the side Right, I'm heading in through the cargo bay at the moment. So what what's your plan with these interiors? Have, have you left them so they can be adapted to whatever scenario we need? Or have you like, given quite a, like, a, you know, what sort of layouts have you gone with a bit of everything? I tried making them look as lived in as possible. Mm -hmm. So you should end up with everything you need, such as uh, lunch room, engine room, uh, rooms for the basic people on the ship. And we're going to move on to the next ship. So yeah. then, so you said when you were naming these that you wanted to name them after sharks. Yeah, uh, they kind of ended up uh, all being named after different sharks. Okay, so th this one is the Hammerhead, and it's clear why it's called the Hammerhead. And yes. is is there any particular reason why you wanted to try putting thrusters on the front rather than the rear, like with the other one, or is it just like a cool sort of concept because it does look really nice? I thought it would look cool. That's honestly, <laughs> <laughs> basically the only reason why I did it. Uh, yeah, I do like that. It widens up. This so this one doesn't actually have a rocket battery at the front, does it? It does. Oh, does it? Where where is it? Where are the rockets stored in this one? Right in here. Oh, I can't even see that. So they're behind glass, and I guess they place that close behind the glass that they can fire through. They spawn them in front. Yeah. Oh, do you want to give that a little bit of a blast? Do you want to head to the bridge and now? Let's have a look at this firepower. So it's going to be quite spread out, isn't it, across the whole front area uh, of the ships? It's going to be. Yeah, spread, but there is some within the uh, inner bits of it, too. The middle of it. Uh-huh. Let us know when you're going to pull that trigger. All right, I'm ready to shoot. Fire it, let's see it. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's a very wide stream, and what's quite useful about that, especially if you're spinning in a dogfight, you're going to have good coverage, because I see a lot of people, they put all the rockets in the middle, and the problem is, if they miss yeah. that, they miss, they miss all the rockets. So a bit more of area effect. So as we come around the back, we've got these ribbed sort of thrusters that I really like the idea of. More hidden sort of turrets. And then the back area, once again, all the thrusters are protected with these really nice cowlins. Uh, what sort of what sort of features would you like to go over on this one before we go inside? Uh, I don't know that there's really any like big interesting features. The whole mm -hmm. front of it is pretty heavily armored. So if it came down to it, you could actually ram stuff without hammerhead. Okay, so should we enter through the hangar bay then at least, coming from underneath? So this yes. is quite this is quite a large hangar bay. So the whole section is dropped down. So access to this is is really quite functional. So when you were, when you were doing these designs as well, did you aim for functionality first, or were you trying to just get like a happy balance so they look good on camera and functioned? I wanted them to basically look good, but also be realistic. Mm hmm. So you've yeah, the interior is slightly different here. You've gone through this like blue sort of rim around it. Do you want to take us through yes. the best way possible? Cover everything, get the bridge. Obviously, we don't need to go to every single tiny crew quarter, but let's have a quick yeah. look about. So with this room, what's this? Is this a storage or just an access for the stairway? This is a hallway with also a bridge in it, or not a bridge, a brig. Oh, very. Which, by nice. the way, Stone Stone made these brigs as well as he helped me a lot with the interior of the Goblin. Oh, so I can see he's also put, like, weapons in the brig. I don't know if that's a super safe idea. <laughs> but uh... no, It's not the best. <laughs> so are we continuing on this deck or are we going up? Uh, I honestly can't remember what all I put down here. I think it's more <laughs> utility stuff. Oh, yeah, so we've yeah. got these nice sloped sort of rooms. Really nice indeed. Do you want to lead us up to the bridge? This is... Oh, this yeah. jump drive room. This is pretty. This is really yeah. nice. I can imagine with some of these rooms, is it's all about, you know, you need a place for a scene. Um, and when you're yep. built, when you're building these places, these corridors come in handy perfectly for you know guys marching down it in little cutscenes and whatnot. Um, so, yeah, I could imagine populating this whole staircase with people moving up and down. It'd definitely be fun with the tools. What's this? What's this deck? Uh, this goes to the engineering. 
Okay, let's continue on then up to the bridge for the moment, and we'll take a look at that in a second. So this okay. is the top floor. Yep, and engineering should be back here. And this is the whole uh, hallway. These are uh, uh, first mate and navigator rooms. Okay, very nice indeed. Oh, and we can see out this window another INIC ship to the side. Keep, Let's keep moving. Another staircase. God, if you're attacking this place, you'd be <laughs> confused, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> That's the That's thing the... about when you always go into other people's ships. It's like you get lost like 90% of the time. Oh, but this is the bridge. This is the comms room. The bridge is up these stairs. Okay. And does this one have a hardened control room? Or does this one just have the main deck nope. again? It, it only has these control rooms. If there is room for adding an additional HUD and uh, cockpit if if the, we ever if needed. needed to. Yeah, if yeah. needed to. All right, should we move on to the next ship, or is there anything else you'd like to go down? Would you like to go to engineering? Uh, yeah, we can look at engineering real quick. I'm going to slide my spectator camera through engineering and just through your walls just to see all the nasty bits that you've tried to hide behind the scenes, Shuck. We, okay. know, what, we know what you like. Okay, so I'm down at engineering <laughs> now, so you've stuck the engines on them sides with the reactors up top. That looks really awesome. Um, and if we go up um, if we go up a floor, we're in the med bay room. That's pretty nice as well. Big spacious rooms though these I like I quite like that because if an impact does happen you know at least some of your systems are going to be working very very cool yeah, and if you look at some of the like walls and stuff some of them is actually pretty thick mm. before you hit start hitting internals yeah I've just gone into the crew quarters now it's a massive yeah ma massive thick areas of corridor where explosions could go off be really cool for some cinematics these definitely i can imagine the crews rushing out of the crew quarters and moving to some of the compartments should we move on to the next one yeah uh, okay. we should be able to get out just through the, the hole in the ceiling or teleport or teleport or teleport right so the next ship what sh this is called the mako mark 2 was the mark 1 yes uh the mark 1 was all modded and stuff okay 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 so was that using the the mods that we originally had from colony wars then Yes, the uh, Max Packs and what was the other ones? I think it's just Max Packs. So this one, I've also noticed that you've done with these little this patterned armor down the side. It almost looks, you know, like um, reactive armor, like on a tank or something. You know, the little yeah. blue bits. I'll I'll put my character on so you know where I'm looking at. But yeah, it's, it looks really cool. This it's like some sort of reactive armor. You've done the ribbon at the back as well. That's kind of keeping these ships, you know, a style together. And you said you'd clipped the other bits together, so you've kept the same bridge. I take it. Yes, I've got blueprints of the bridge separate from everything, and the thruster pack separate from everything, as well as the front thrusters on the hammerhead. So are these using the same sort of engine base? So like they're all kind of in, you know, if you work on one ship, you know what the other ship's going to be like. Yes. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I like that idea. Right, let's they're have all... a look around the front then, Chuck. Right. So this is this one's got like a wedge type pattern of rockets. Pretty cool indeed. Yeah. And you can see like you've done the shark teeth type design. Any other bits you want to go over on the outside before we go in? Uh, not really. I kept this one pretty simple. It's just meant to be like a a uh, battleship, essentially. So mm -hmm. decent firepower, decent armor. It's probably got the most heavy armor on it out of all the ships. And no hangar bay on this one? No. Okay, so how do we gain access? What do you recommend? Uh, there is a door right here. Okay. I need to add a merge block to it so it can actually dock with stations and stuff. So you can yep. just walk right onto it. Let's pop on inside. So we're greeted with a hallway. Ooh, let's keep mm -hmm. going on. That's just an airlock on either side. I'm guessing that bit. And they all mirrored these, or are some of them slightly off? You know, one size different than the other. Uh, they sh their interiors are all different from each other, but similar enough that you feel like you're on basically the same kinds of ships. Mm -hmm. Should we move on to the carrier then? Yeah. Right. So with the carrier, it almost has like two massive pipes that come off the side. Has it got the same nose piece of the other one? Yes. Okay, but it's yes. not got rockets, this one. Uh, no, this one. Oh, no, this one doesn't have the same nose piece as the uh, battleship. Mm -hmm. This one's got... Is this some sort of observation room or command control at the front? It's for uh, keeping track of the flights, basically. Uh, fighters that come and go. Oh, okay. And so When they can or cannot leave. So, so inside here, what is meant? Can this fit everything? The jackal, the large one, the troop transport. Do you want to grab the jackal and just fly it in for us? 
So we can have a look at that. We'll see what that looks like before we do the tour of the rest of the place. Yeah. Well, I'm guessing the rear and the middle segment are the same as the other one, where we've got ourselves the the food halls, the engine thruster pack at the back, and this large centerpiece is going to be a mixture of crew quarters and storage for the the ships. I like how long these tubes are back to the hangar. Like it's yeah. it's deep. All right, I'm coming in. Which side are you coming in? Uh, front left. Or oh, I see left. it. I see it. And look, you've got a you've got a lot of space with this ship. Can you fit the bigger one in there? You reckon? You can fit the Sparrow, but not the Condor. Okay, so where would the Condor typically dock? Would that dock on an external docking port? I think I'm going to turn the belly of this thing because I'm not fully done with this. If you look mm -hmm. at the very front of it. If you look at the very, very front of it, it's got stuff on the very top and bottom that I still need to fill in. And on the belly of it, right beneath this hangar, there's a big, flat, open space. I think oh, I'm going to make yeah. that the landing spot for the uh, Condor. Well, have it drop down, or you can have them bring in here. So, in, I, which, which do you think you're going to do? I'll probably do a, uh, a rounded-off ramp and do some stuff with gravity generators so that you can just walk down the ramp and it will just roll you right side up as you're walking mm. down it <laughs> not have some sort of a go go gadget flip thing you press a button and this whole pad <laughs> rotates around <laughs> and the ships are there i mean that'd be uh, pretty cool too uh, i can only imagine what the game would like to do that so as we come into this the jump drive and this just starts into a a standard rear area yeah it's, it's absolutely standard isn't it this section but you've yep. hollow, you've hollowed it out have you kept room for the crew quarters then in this Yes, this thing's fully loaded with all the different rooms and everything you need. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I've just seen what you've done, Show This is really cool. Like, what you've done is, you've instead of putting it where the hangar bay is, this middle bit where, you know, the command and control center is, this is where all the rest of the bits are, isn't it? I think so. I'm not sure where you're at. Uh, I'm in the mess hall at the moment. It's got a smaller mess hall. Oh, so okay. I'm just going yeah. through the corridors. Up to the control room at the front with all the monitors so you can list all your outgoing and ingoing flights really nice oh we've got car containers down there slightly different layout than the other room and then that just yeah. drops down into the tubes you've got a lot of protection though on these ships that i really like a lot of thick walls yeah it's uh it kind of ended just ended up being like that where they were super thick and stuff mm -hmm. uh, just because of the way other words, the interior would have been super wide and huge, so I kind of just filled in a bunch of walls to make it feel like a good cramped spaceship mm -hmm. or semi-cramped spaceship. Because the final thing I do like on this is it's hard to get rockets, you know, directly into the hangar bay to blow up all the fighters. Like, yeah, I mean, if you shoot directly down one of these tubes, you're not going to hit anything because it goes around a corner. There's no hangar bays on the side where someone can just blow them up. Because the amount of times I've seen in multiplayer battles where they just blow the hangar bay door off and all the ships are just hanging out there. Um, yeah. Well, this one's going to be definitely fun. It's going to be interesting to see how this armor works as well since it's kind of spaced and diagonally and going up and down all over the place. Any... Ooh, what's this up here? Have you done cutouts? <laughs> You've done cutouts, Shock. You didn't tell me. Oh, yeah, the... Uh... Yeah, the cutouts and the gold inlays. This is beautiful. Yeah, uh, Enik was supposed to be a bunch of like rich English people, I think it was. So I figured <laughs> they'd like having really nice gold cutouts and inlays. Wow, these would be beautiful, you know, for on monitors and screens and stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, these are really nice. I like the I like a good cutout, a good cross section of a ship. It's like seeing you know a good sandwich, you know. Cut oh, out. you're talking about the. Uh, the cross sections yeah 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 that's what i'm talking I th about i thought you were talking about the gold inlays on the carrier oh no 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 i was talking about the, <laughs> the cross sections <laughs> up here i just spotted oh wow oh. these are lovely real real fantastic design shook i can't wait to use them in some upcoming cinematics yeah. and videos but yeah anyway that is something for you guys to look forward to so we'd like to thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time